So for starters, a seemingly normal bungalow, about a thousand square feet or so. Four of us living there, full family with a big old dog. I think part of me being into tiny houses or being so obsessed is uh, I kind of had no choice, I guess you could say. I don't know, we grew up in a small house in a pretty well-to-do town, but our house was, I mean, out of all my friends, I had the, the tiny little house and they had the, the house with the uh, helicopter landing pad, not really. This here is a uh, prefabricated tree house called the Wolf's Den that I'm working on for a client in New York. It's going to hang about three or four feet in the air in a tree. The woman pretty much, the only criteria she gave me, she said make sure it gets lots of natural light. That whole roof face you see back there is all going to be corrugated kind of greenhouse plastic. This will be situated under a big shade tree so she won't be roasted alive. And uh, the base of it is 10 by 10 feet, an equilateral triangle which uh, more or less is enough to sleep two people in sleeping bags. Just a simple sleeping and or reading spot. And from here on out, things get interesting as we head to the backyard. See, we're situated kind of below a hill, so from the street you don't see any of this. Uh, small house I grew up in, we, we vacationed in small cabins, and uh, I just never felt there was a need for more. I was always fine with it. This is the Hickshaw, made out of Vermont sustainably grown cedar, uh, mill castaways. I have a cabin in Vermont, 250 square feet. I've built without primarily electricity or power, most of it. If it was a mill, anytime we go up there, we buy cedar off them, like bargain cedar, scrap stuff, throwaway stuff, and I make a lot of my stuff out of that very cedar. But this one was built on a cedar deck recliner I found at the dump, reinforced it, it's only about two and a half feet wide by like seven feet long. You know, I saw some friends of mine who had these houses that were just so extravagant. And I thought to myself, why? You're spending so much time to, you're working so many hours every week to heat that house, to furnish it, to pay for it, to clean it. It just seemed kind of absurd to me. The bigger the house, the more of your life, your shortened, finite life, you're, you're using up to make those ends meet. But you don't really need a house like that. Simple scrap wood door. I'm not claustrophobic. Maybe if you were, you wouldn't want to go inside this thing. It's a coffin, Deke. It's not. Again, with windows, you can make the smallest of spaces seem pretty spacious. Naturally, those values have been instilled in me, and I live in a small house, a modest-sized house today, and build and design tiny, tiny little weekend retreat shelters, houses. Cabin, shack, shanties, whatever you want to call them. This here is uh, in the works as well, a micro made of scrap wood, free-floating, Treehouse for kids, for lack of a better title, it's called the Wedgie. You know, I was a kid. I built so many forts growing up. I was kind of addicted to it. Then at one point in time, my tenth birthday, I was gifted a copy of Lester Walker's Tiny Houses. The book is phenomenal. Still paw through it to this day. From then on out, I kind of realized, like, oh, you could kind of be an adult or be older, not just a kid, and still be into this. And it's not considered uber weird. Now, if you look up above the treehouse, not sure for whatever reason I did this, but I started working on something way up here, 35 feet in the air, which has been fun, but I haven't had time to do much with it lately. So from there on out, I just started collecting tiny housing books and continued building, especially back then with the kid no money, you know, fort, shack, shelter, shanties made with freebie or recycled materials. So over here, I guess I'll show you this real quick. It's a mess. All my curbside windows I found. If I had to describe my backyard, I guess you could say it's kind of a mad scientist's uh, laboratory of lumber back there. All stuff, well about half of it I found on the street. And other junk that I'm fixing up. Okay, a lot of these cabins too, you can simply for water hook them up to rain barrels. I used to build them for a living, but just kind of stopped. Don't have the time. In the end run, it pretty much all gets used. This is the boxy lady, a kiosk slash single sleeper and made with uh, recycled curbside found junk thrown away materials. One of the things that attracts me to the whole micro architecture movement if you want to call it that is uh, just the freedoms in it. I mean if you build under a certain square footage in a lot of counties, a lot of states, districts, probably countries, in some cases you can do almost whatever you want. You don't need to pull a permit. Here's the uh, office water cooler bottle window. There's kind of the whole outlaw aspect of it as well. I grew up playing a lot of punk bands, penning a lot of punk zines, 
and the coffin-like leg space. Most of these are uh, from my kind of hand-assembled basement book, uh, Humble Home of Simple Shacks. And uh, I wrote this in 2009, 2008 into 2009. Put it out for sale online, and lo and behold, to this date, I've sold almost 3,000 of these from my basement, all hand-assembled, comb-bound by me. It's about 100 pages of uh, just some crazy, you know, cabin designs, Ford shack shanties, just some brainstorm session ideas. Um, to get the creative juices flowing. Part of me is that whole quote unquote, you know, fight the power aspect of it. You know, I'm sick of these boxed, uh, boring cookie cutter houses you're offering me. I want something more, something cool, freeform organic Woodstock era houses, geodesic domes. I want to build a house out of soda cans or whatever. I mean, I feel people to a certain extent should have the freedom to experiment with that kind of stuff. But there are a lot of laws and restrictions, unfortunately. A lot of them which make perfect sense, and I firmly believe in it back, but others which are antiquated, and some of those old, archaic ones that prevent people from exploring new avenues of building. I did this with uh, cheapo dime store pens, and uh, still selling it out of my basement. There's like 50-something designs in here. This one here, you shall see in a second, the Gypsy Junker. This one's made except for the roof of all recycled materials again. All the wood here, forklift pallet, truck pallet wood, uh, scrap wood here I put through a table saw to make these batten strips, washing machine side for a table, regular sash style window, this shovel here, a redneck coat hanger. Yeah, a lot of people ask me, you know, are you a micro architect, an architect? I'm not an architect, I call myself a, a tinkerer or uh, I've come up with Bizarchitect or Larchitect being kind of a fake architect. Former kitchen cabinets, now Dutch style Mr. Ed Doors. Surprising thing is I've had a lot of real, very established architects buy my book and compliment me on some of the designs. So I guess there's something to be said for people coming in, uh, coming from the underground with no official uh, training. But uh, you know, I've done carpentry forever, so that, that does help. Vegetable oil heater I built out of scraps and a lot of natural light from the Tough Tex uh, roofing. When all else fails, if you need some extra light, just stick some soda bottle butts in a wall. Never got around to trimming them out, sanding them, or painting them, but maybe next lifetime. Oh yeah, a lot of people ask about these. They're just wine bottles I cut in half with a tile saw. Took a hole saw, cut the holes out in plywood, and I uh, just shoved them in, cocked them up. Only roughly sanded for the time being. I just put five in them. You could theoretically make a huge mosaic of these into a piece of plywood, which when the light comes through them would look rather cool. But you don't have to take my word for it. Onward. Here's the basic concept as to how this next cabin, the Gotta Get Away, was built. Plywood siding and purlin, it's about it. A homeless shelter, emergency relief shelter that I kind of had some fun with, that I built for about a hundred bucks or so using a bunch of recycled materials as well. And yes, as I move closer, this is a front-loading washing machine window. Wish I had more of them. A lot of people see some of the stuff I've built, though, and, and they say, oh, that's too small, you couldn't live in that. But I think they're missing the point. It's just this little shell, four by four feet, with a tiny foot extension. That window down there is an Ikea $1 trash can, which worked pretty well. Traced it, cut out the hole, cocked that baby in a couple screws. I'm just trying to show people that with the used materials, free materials in a lot of cases, it's possible to build a house for virtually nothing. You know, the pickle jar window, just a jar inserted through a wall, cocked in. The number 28 signifies nothing. Found it at a yard sale for 25 cents, like the color scheme. But here's the little, I didn't clean it out, but the little foot chamber. So if you're not sleeping in the thing, you can store lumber, skis, who knows what in here. In effect, making it a tiny shit. I've toured many states with this thing. It fits right in a 4x8 trailer I have. As we head indoors, I almost forgot, we built this at the workshop too. It's a free hanging micro office slash sleeping bunk. Fits a full futon mattress more or less. I call it the crunk bunk. Not nearly done yet. A lot of work to go. Alex Pino of Tiny House Talk, who was at the workshop, was the first person to actually sleep in this. Let it be known, and he survived the night. 
when I'm working on my books and my sketches and my tiny house designs, I kind of want to be immersed in some atmosphere that's conducive to weirdness or creativity. So I build a lot of these things for myself, selfishly, <laughs> to hang out in. All right, we're going to show you the last cabin I worked uh, was working on the workshop we hosted. I put some finishing touches on it. It's this tiny little thing here. You know, it's like a permanent tent, a weekender micro cabin. I call it the little blue bump. I think one of the reasons I keep waving that tiny architectural banner, I just don't see a problem with living that way. This here, it's actually another one of those IKEA containers. I haven't actually finished this little cabin. Take this lid off. When I cut a hole, caulk this, insert it, and it will be a window complete with trim. Here's a uh, pallet wood chair. Hey, I'm not saying people who live in big houses are bad, but considering the, the average house in the U.S. is well above 2,000 square feet, it's close to 2,500 square feet. I haven't finished caulking these. This is top of a pasta pot kind of thing. The students in the workshop came up with this little wine bottle door handle, which is kind of cool, and built this door with all this scrap radiator screening inside a tray looking window it's glass that was far on the side of the road i'm just trying to show people push them to think outside the box don't accept those boring cookie cutter square walled houses if it's something that really doesn't fit what you do or the way you want to live i like doing these uh externally situated windows that pop out from the structure because they provide a lot of storage space it's like the poor man's bay window and lots and lots and lots of natural light this way, again, these don't feel that small when you're in them. If you put them in the woods somewhere when you're camping out, you get to see all the trees and the surroundings while you sleep, while you hang out. If you have just a few tools, you can dive into this, build yourself your own shelter. It's really not that difficult. Uh, start with something small, a weekend or cabin, or just a little micropod shelter. And you know, who knows, down the road you might be building your own home and saving a, a ton of money doing so.